Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Impact Play, impacting more than just gaming. We are your weekly source for the latest news, updates, discussions, and debates that brings us to way beyond than just gaming. We're not only blurring the lines between gaming, tech, entertainment, sports, and music. We are amplifying voices from those perspective fields and having their stories told here on the Impact Play. Join us as we record the show live over at Twitch.tv backslash the impact play and by clicking on that notification bell so you will be notified when we do go live or later on youtube or even on your favorite podcast platform just simply search for the impact play whoever consume your content whatever you consume it we are there join us on patreon well several quotes and above get the show ad free go to quotes and above have exclusive access to not only the post show but they can even call in to be a part of the live show experience plus early access to our vods and so much more learn more and become a patreon supporter today at patreon.com backslash the impact play we are an epic partner so with every purchase you make within the epic ecosystem when you use our creator code the impact play we do get a commission to help support and further elevate the show and take us even to newer heights and no extra cost to you again use our creator code the impact play Whenever you buy any V-Bucks in Fortnite or the latest cards in Racket League or any game within the Epic Store, it all is this is just one of the many ways that that will help support the show at zero cost to you. Again, it's just uh, all, all your enterings are creator code and we just get a little cut out of it. But I, I am your show's Muhammad, otherwise known as It's Yagu. This is episode 136. On the agenda, we have Pokemon Legends Arceus is available now. Crisis 3 is inbound. Respawn is working on three brand new Star Wars games. Elden Ring has gone gold. YouTube and Reddit are hopping into the NFT space. Is Land Air Travel upon us? Jason Momoa could star in the next Fast and Furious film. Chris Evans may star in Dwayne The Rock Johnson's The Red One. A, three, a sequel to Mortal Kombat has been greenlit. George Bayo could be leaving at Landing United. Brock Lesnar and Ronda Rousey are both set to headline WrestleMania. Is Tom Brady retiring? Drake's first official Nike sneaker. Universal Music further expands on its relationship with Twitch and Amazon Music. Two Chains' upcoming album plus the top stories of the week. And speaking of ads, this episode of the Impact Play is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, you're definitely missing out. Give it a try. It's free and simple. Plus, you've got nothing to lose. You don't need the best equipment out there. All you need is your phone and something to talk about. There's even creation tools that allow you to not only record, but also edit your podcast all within the app. Whatever your passion is, Anchor is the surefire way to not only start your podcast, but also distribute it across a multitude of platforms, including Spotify, Google and Apple Podcasts, and so much more. Download the free Anchor app or simply go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to our very first segment of the show. We're discussing what we've been playing, what we've been enjoying, essentially what we have been up to. So if you guys are aware, we did a live playthrough two days ago where I played a good amount of Destiny 2. I hopped into some Fortnite. And I also hopped into a couple of matches on Rocket League, which if you guys have missed that, um, that live stream, you could also check out the VOD that's available now on our YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash the Empire Play. But then again, it was a blast. So if you guys are interested in joining us when we do go live with uh, with my with my live takeovers or you know any um, any any other any other takeovers as well for the for our Twitch channel. You can join us at twitch.tv backslash the Empire Play and by uh, clicking on the notification bell so you'll be notified when we, do, when we do go live with these playthroughs as well. In addition to the episodes of the podcast and breaking news and what have you. There's a whole bunch of content. But nonetheless, I had a blast. Uh, I, like, The Witcher Queen is literally coming out next month. So I'm trying to get as much uh, playthrough of Destiny 2 as I can. And also, there's a new limited time mode. Uh, it's, I think it's called Heat Seeker. And Rackley, it's available now. It, uh, it's fun. And then, what else? 
Fortnite, I was just literally just exploring the map because I haven't played Fortnite in maybe over a year. And of course, every season you have to explore the map. And then on top of that, you get points for exploring new locations and surviving and what have you. Okay, you guys are aware how Fortnite works. That's literally all I was doing. I played two matches and there is one... I think it was the first, uh, my first, I'm not sure my second, my second ha happened. But nonetheless, uh, I was outside the storm, like way behind the outskirts. But I, I survived it. I have no idea how. But if you guys are interested, check out the VOD. And yeah, just, just enjoy it, just, just enjoy it on, on YouTube. But nonetheless, uh, I did uh, watch the uh, latest episode of Boba Fett, which was pretty interesting. I'm going to keep it spoiler free for now. If you guys are interested into the spoiler uh, version of our, of, of our spoiler cast, it'll be up hopefully by tonight. If not, it'll be uploaded you know, by Monday or Tuesday, the latest. But nonetheless, it's an interesting episode if you guys haven't watched it already. It was something unexpected that happened. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, we're going to hop into the news, folks. And we're going to start with your gaming play. Uh, let's find it. Gaming, 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 gaming. Found it. Okay, perfect. Elden Ring has gone gold. And it will take, it will take about at least 30 hours, if not more, to beat. And this is coming over from GameSpot. From Software has completed development on the long-awaited Elden Ring with a master version being submitted for approval. The developer has confirmed work isn't completely done, though, as the developers are now working on a day one patch that will include updates and optimizations. Elden Ring going gold was confirmed during the Tepai Game Show, where From Software also discussed Elden Ring's length. Producer Yoshorio. Yo, yo, ya, Shiro, Katao, hopefully I didn't watch that. So the playtime will vary depending on a number of factors, but the main route should take players around 30 hours. This will differ significantly by player, of course. <laughs> but in terms of target set during the development, the idea is that the main route should be able to be completed within around 30 hours. The game as a whole is quite massive. It contains many dozen more hours worth of gameplay. But if we are talking about the main route only, it should take no... It shouldn't should take long, much longer than that. But for me, I know that for sure. And it's going to take me a lot longer. But uh, apparently it's going to be it's gonna release on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S, X, and PC. So it's like a cross-generational game. And will debut on February 25th. All right. Respawn is working on three brand new Star Wars games, including Jedi Fallen Order, the sequel. It's coming over from IGN. EA is far from finished from the Star Wars universe. The publisher is working on three brand new Star Wars titles, all of which are being overseen in one form or another by developer Respawn Entertainment. The games comprise, comprises a sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, the FPS, and even a strategy game. In real release, it has been offered for any of the new games. The new game in the Star Wars Jedi series, which was confirmed to be the start of a franchise shortly after its 2019 release, will once again be directed by Sting Asmussen, who led development of the first game as well as God of War 3. The Jedi Fallen Order sequel will be joined by two additional games set in the Star Wars universe, both of them yet has yet untitled. One will be a first-person shooter led by Peter her Hirschman, who previously worked as VP of Development at LucasArts, has a long history of working with Lucasfilm and co-created Medal of Honor. The other will be a strategy game developed by Bit Reactor, a recently formed studio compromised of Firaxis Games, veterans best known for their work on the XCOM franchise. So it looks like it might be the gameplay maybe similar to that title. Bit Reactor will work closely to respawn on the new pro product. Project. <laughs> and Respawn founder and group general manager Vince Zambala will oversee the new uh, three game initiative with EA characterized as a new phase of EA's relationship with Lucasfilm.
But yeah, we'll see how they settle. It looks like they, they're just developing on these games. So it might take a couple of years until we, we see any sort of title, trailer, or what have you. So just be patient on that. Game development is a long and utter process. Crisis 4 is on its way, with developer Cry Crytek putting out a teaser trailer following a leak on Chinese social media. The game is still early in development and will be a while yet. Announced under the simply headline of a Crytek announcement, the teaser shows a number of Im images from, from an unstable sun to a collapsing building before ending with a large number 4 and tagline, Join the Journey, Become the Hero. No official title, release date, platforms, or game details have been announced at time of this writing. And CEO uh, Aini Yearly has confirmed that the fourth Crisis game is in the early stages of development, so it'll be a, a while. But yeah, of course, game development takes a long time, but yeah. All right, moving on. The first batch of pre-orders for the Steam Deck are expected to ship out by the end of next month. Well, end of this month. Uh, on February 25th, Steam will send out the first batch of emails to those who with reservations on the handheld console. From there, customers will have three days to purchase it for a shipping date of February 28th. Those that don't pay for the reservation and time period will lose their slot and will be released to the next person in the quay. Steam plans to send out order confirmations in weekly batches. Additionally, Steam Deck price units will start shipping on February 25th and the, and the embargo coverage will uh, lift on that same day. So I can't wait to get mine. And, uh, and have a review out for that as well. Welcome. Appreciate you joining us today. Alright, moving on. We have everything that has been confirmed for the Witcher Cream. Witcher Queen. <laughs> then it's a little article coming from Turtle Beach. It's been quite a while since Destiny 2 got its first last, I'm sorry guys, last major expansion, Beyond Light. But players won't have to wait much longer for the next because The Witch Queen is set to release on February 2nd, 2022. Not only will this next chapter expand heavily on the game's storyline, it is also set to include a number of additions like new weapons and crafting systems. Here's everything so far confirmed. We have new locations. Savathin's Throne World. We have a new weapon, the the glaive, wow, it's like a long bow sword. Let me see, let me show you guys. Games, gaming news, gaming news, entertainment news, news in general. Okay, let me see. For all you audio listeners, you're definitely missing out. If you are unable to join us live, you could also uh, watch the video once it goes up on our YouTube page. This is actually nice. Like a lathe. I definitely want it when it comes out. I want it. What if it's crafting? Well, I'm interested in trying this out. Usually we just, we get weapon drops after any match or, you know, any raid or what have you. Okay, we have a legendary mode up the ante. Okay. Changes to light classes, new raid dungeons, and endgame content, of course. There's going to be a lot dropping in this DLC, which I'm excited for. Yeah, pretty much. A lot of good news. Alright. We have a new take on the, f on the football franchises. Instead of FIFA, there's, the there's a new player making the rounds. UFL. Is in development at the studio called Strikers Incorporated. It has seemingly been in the works since 2016. It's going to be free to play, and, the, and developers say there's no mandatory payments or even yearly fees. The game is designed to be a fair to play experience, emphasize a skill first approach with zero to pay to win options. And there is even a handful of big names on board already, including Man United, Cristiano Ronaldo, Manchester City. Kevin De Bruyne, Chelsea, a lot of a lot of big names are here, and even a licensing agreement with Sporting CP and Shakhtar Donetsk FT 
FC, I'm sorry, Football Club. But I'm just I'm, I'm interested in how this comes out. So it's it's apparently due later out this year. So I'm definitely excited about this since it's the first of a contender to FIFA. If we have any any more updates, we'll definitely update update everyone accordingly. We have the reviews for Pokemon Legends RCS that are out now. That is out. GameSpot, an 80 out of 100. VGC, 100 out of 100. So a lot of people are liking this. So literally, we have scores 80 and up out of 100 from Check News, Inverse, VG247. But it's like the first ever kind. And speaking of Pokemon, we have a new art collaboration with artist Danielle Harsham. It's all about a ruined, fossilized future, building on the large themes of his previous two Pokemon projects, Relics of Kanto, Through Time and Time Dilation. Arshim's upcoming A Ripple and Time exhibition, opening in Tokyo, will feature a variety of Pokemon works of art meant to evoke the passage of time. In addition to paintings, drawings, and Arsham's signature Pokemon statues inspired by architecture and the concept of Fictional Archaeology, A Ripple of Time will also feature an animated work project by Arsham and Kenihiko Yohama, a former general director of the Pokemon anime, who now acts as creative supervisor. According to the press release about the exhibition, this, uh, this project came to be at the strongest request of Arsham itself, himself, who worked alongside Yu Yuyama to map out elements to the animated art pieces, ranging from storyboarding to finishing. But um, I'm going to reach out and hopefully we could have um for an interview. So stay tuned on that for once we get anything uh, official. Moving on. Ubisoft will shut down Hyrule Escape on April 28th. Which I knew was going, but I'm pretty sure the audience died a long time ago. Because when the beta first released, I was one of the very first ones that got invited. And I definitely... Uh, put out my review, my thoughts on that as well. It, it was a nice, uh, it was a different, a nice little, a unique take on the battle royale genre. But I'm guessing they just couldn't support it because there is not that much of a crowd playing it. Halo, we have a new teaser trailer for the Halo TV series. <laughs> I'm definitely excited. That was released. At the AFC Championship game between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Kansas City Chiefs on well today actually, but yeah. So it looks like it's going to be released later on today, and the full trailer expected to release at around 5 p.m. Xbox is apparently working on a Monster Hunter-like exclusive with Halo Infinite co-developer, which I'm definitely excited for this. So, Xbox is reportedly working on a Monster Hunter-like exclusive codenamed Project Suarte with Halo Infinite co-developer Certain, Certain Affinity, reported by uh, first by journalist Jeff Grubb and backed by Windows Central. The new game has been apparently been in development since 2020 and is slated for release in 2023 or even 2024. According to Grubb, Microsoft actively courted developers for a game like Monster Hunter after deciding the Capcom series would be too expensive to add to Game Pass. Other details remain under wraps. So, and hopefully they can bring Monster Hunter to Xbox. We'll see. But nonetheless, let's keep moving on. We're done with gaming, folks. Now we're going to move on to tech. Mm, if I can find it. Oh, found it. <laughs> All right. NFTs, NFTs, NFTs. Let me organize all this, all these NFT thingies, so we can talk about this all at once. Mm. 
Well, okay. So this first bit of news is coming from Forbes.com. President Joe Biden is planning to executive action for federal agencies to regulate cryptocurrencies, digital assets, and Bitcoin as he contends this is a matter of national security. He's striking at a time when the crypto sector, along with the stock market, is going through a tumultuous time, losing large amounts of value as the Federal Reserve said it will start raising interest rates to cool down inflation. His sights are, aren't only on Bitcoin. Regulators will look into stablecoins and NFTs. The Biden administration will also coordinate efforts with regulators and global leaders. And the whole reason for Bitcoin, so it, because it's decentralized, not controlled by the government. But we'll see how, how this fares. Because a lot of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a whole bunch of coins are just been, have been dropping up value this past week, I believe. But yeah. Again, we are not a any form of financial advisement or or anything of the sort. So we're just literally reporting on this and giving our take on, on the matter. So more NFT news. The UFC and the NFL have both dabbed are both into Dapper Labs, which if you guys are aware, I'm I'm I have a couple I have a good amount of NBA top shots since March of last year. I'm mistaken, but yeah. So the UFC uh, and the NFL, you could get NFL moments as well if you guys are interested in that. It's and now we have YouTube, and first we have a, a YouTube CEO hinting at potential NFT features. So we're gonna talk about this first before we hop into the Reddit news. YouTube NFTs may be in the works in a letter published today. Well, published on the 25th. YouTube CEO Susan Rajsiki suggested the company is looking to branch into NFTs in the future as another source of revenue for creators. We're already focused on expanding the YouTube ecosystem to help creators capitalize on emerging technologies, including things like NFTs, while continuing to strengthen and enhance the well, what was that? The experiences creators and fans have on YouTube. The letter reads. But this was detail, this detail was part of Wojcicki's latest letter to the YouTube community. But I'm pretty sure that this comes because you can get NFTs anywhere, especially in open sea. What I'm thinking that they're uh, they're interested in doing is creating like their own little uh, marketplace within YouTube. This way, they could get a cut out of it. If like open sea has it, that means essentially uh, not, uh, very, there's very little third party involvement. But YouTube wants to get in, in, in on that, so people can start sharing NFTs on their platform, which essentially they, they get more of, they get more of a profit from. It's just a little, uh, it's just a little area where where they can get more money from. Essentially, is what is what I'm getting out of this. And now we're gonna hop into this Reddit Reddit news coming from Hyper Hype Beast. Reddit appears to be testing on a new feature that will soon allow its users to set an NFT as their own profile picture. So this is similar to Twitter's uh, NFT profile picture as well. TechCrunch first reported that the feature will be similar to Twitter's with the photo of the NFT would itself pro provide users information on the digital piece itself. We provided a statement to TechCrunch explaining that the company is still very early stages of its NFT testing phase that has not yet been made available to the public users. All right, and now this last bit of NFT news is coming from P huh? What is this website? PRN Newswire. Tastify, which is a which they make cases for like iPhones, Galaxies, and what have you. The world's leading global tech accessory brand today announced the launch of it. NFTs, your case, a new platform using NFT verification technology to create custom phone cases, signaling their investment in the emerging physical digital space. Following Casetify's recent purchase of BAC number 3583, sold for 83.4 ETH, approximately $260,000 US dollars, Casetify not only became the first DTC brand to climb aboard the board Ape Yacht Club, but also introduced the first verified NFT phone case to the world powered by Casetify. Users, users will be able to verify NFTs from their Ethereum wallet to prove authentication and print them onto the brand's premium quality phone cases. 
From there, customers can pay in ETH or US dollars to have the product printed, shipped directly to their doorstep. So I'm going to showcase the image for you momentarily. So when I first heard about the news story, I thought it was like a, it's like it gives you like a little screen on the back of the case where you could highlight your NFTs. But when I looked into this further, it's just like a sticker essentially onto the case, which doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like anybody can print that out. Anybody can put a blue thing around, around, around their case. So literally to prove it, after we have NF NFT wallets such as uh, co the Coinbase wallet, we have... Uh, What's this other wallet? Give me a second. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. MetaMask and what have you. Well, let's keep moving on. E Elon Musk's range of companies preparing to launch human trials. His chip, his brain chip company, Neuralink, appears to be gearing up to launch its first ever human trials with the firm now looking to recruit a number, a director to run the tests, according to The Guardian. And this article is coming from IGN, the charm, who owns a variety of science, entrepreneur, who owns a variety of science-based startups, is preparing to take Neuralink's brain chip research to the next stage by hiring a mission-driven clinical trial director to begin human testing. The company is moving forward potentially to find a way to use the technology to treat people with brain and even spinal in injuries. So we'll see how, what fruit this thing bears. This investment bears, I should say. Samsung left us all hanging with uncertainty last week when the Korean tech giant has was a no-show as its own planned press conference. Now in newsroom and now in a newsroom black post, Samsung has officially introduced its new high-end mobile Exynos 2200 processor, featuring AMD's RDNA 2 architecture. Samsung has doubted has dubbed the new hybrid GPU Exclipse getting the X from the Exynos processor while the Eclipse idea comes from its sits between the mobile GPU and the console, thanks to AMD's RDNA technology. Samsung is boasting the Xclipse can handle hardware accelerated ray tracing and variable rate shading like sh higher end consoles and PCs on a mobile device. I'm definitely excited about this. So hopefully this will be featured in Samsung's, Samsung's upcoming S22. We'll see. Speaking of S22, Samsung, the next Galaxy Unpacked has it offici will officially stream on February 9th. At 10 a.m. Eastern. So hopefully it'll feature this technology. We'll see. <laughs> but I'm excited nonetheless. Now, we're going to get into this nice little bit of news. Following its first successful intercity flight in June of last year, Claim Vision's air car, its road legal car, air car aircraft vehicle, has now received the official certification of airworthiness from the Slogan Transportation Authority. The air car will stored rigorous testing, including 200 takeoffs and landings, and 70 hours of cross country flight test, which examined the vehicle's full range of flight and performance maneuvers. Impressively, takeoff and landing procedures can now be achieved without the pilot's need to touch any flight controls. Air car certification opens the door for mass production of very efficient flying cars. It is official and the final confirmation of our ab ability to, to change mid distance travel forever, said Professor St Stephen St Klein, the inventor led of the development team and, and test pilot. The current flight uh, tested prototype is equipped with a BMW 1.6 L Patel engine. And its upcoming model will see the arrival of a larger 300 BHP engine. Can capable of flying up to 600 miles in one journey at a cruising speed of around 186 miles per hour. The Transportation Authority carefully monitored all stages of unique air car development form since its start in, back in 2017. Transport, 
transportation safely is our highest priority. Aircrew combined top innovations with safety measures in line with EASA standards. It defines a new category of a sports car and a reliable aircraft. Its certification was both a challenging and fascinating task, said Rene Monod, Director of Civil Aviation Division. So, uh, looking forward, the client vision production models are expected to be certified within the next year. So we're gonna give you guys a video of, of all this. Okay, let's put my headphones on. Okay, let's see. I want to see this like without its wings. And it's said to only take a few seconds for it to transform from a car to an air vehicle. There we go, it's transforming back into a car. Oh, that's all it does? Oh, it's actually not bad. Okay. All right. Two minutes to transform. Set. Be free again. This is going to take up drastically. All right. Moving on. Twitter's flag feature will allow users to share tweets within a select group of people. So similar to like how WhatsApp has groups or Instagram has groups now. So that's essentially it's the new feature that they're testing out now. And Apple, uh, let's see. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Apple's latest Apple OS beta delivers face ID with a mask and universal control. Oh, let me take this off. Oh, so I could, I could barely hear myself. <laughs> okay. Apple just dropped a, brand, a bunch of new OS betas, bringing a pair of log awaited features. iOS beta 15.4 delivers the ability to unlock your phone with a face ID while wearing a mask. We're going to be. Okay, let's see. While versions beta 15.4 of iPad OS and Mac OS 12.3 delivers the delayed feature of universal control. Now, the feature was expected last year, but has since been a notable delay. It's currently anticipated for spring through developer, though developer beta testers can get their hands on it now. This feature is kind of an alternative to Sidecar, where the iPad turns into an initial display that will automatically like, you share a mouse cursor and keyboard between the Mac and iPad. So that's essentially what it is. And now, this last bit of news is coming from The Verge. Regulators, carriers, and the airline industry seem to be figuring out the details surrounding the rollout of C-band, 5G, and potential effects on air travel, according to the Federal Aviation Administration's latest statement. The, through continue, can, why am I not reading this? Okay, through continued technical collaboration, the FAA, Verizon, and AT&T have agreed on steps that will enable more aircraft to safely use key airports while also enabling more towers to deploy 5G service. Carriers have provided more precise data about the exact locations of wireless transmitters and, sup and supported more 
thorough analysis of how 5G C-band signals interact with sensitive aircraft instruments, according to an FAA statement released on Friday, which you can read in full below. But ATT and Verizon have uh, long have launched the upgraded cell tech last week, where concerns from the FAA and early industry that the radar altimeters, which are vital instruments used to safely land planes in low visible conditions, would Im- would improperly pick up the cell signals and give up in proper readings. To help alleviate to help alleviate these fears, carriers agreed to further expand the agreed upon buffer zones around certain airports, which caused a slip dip in the number of people who benefited from the upgraded service in some cases. Both AT and have right citizen have expressed frustration while the FAA while doing so though. Now it seems that it's, that if there's more cooperation, the FAA says it's used data provided by the carriers to determine that it is it possible to safely and more precisely map the size and shape of the areas around airports where 5G signals are mitigated, showing the areas where wireless providers are def- are deferring their antenna AV activ- activation activations. This in turn should enable the wireless providers to st- safely turn on more towers as they deploy new 5G service in major markets across the United States. All right. We're done with tech, folks. We're going to move on to entertainment. No, that's not it. Oh. James Gums confirms Guardians 3 is the last time people will see this team together. Speaking to uh, to Deadline, Gunn revealed that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 will be a proper send-off for him as director as well as the team. This is the end for us. This is the last time people will see the team of Guardians. I just want to be true to the characters, and I want to be true to the story, and I want to give people the real wrap-up that they deserve for the story. This is coming from IGN. Matt... After years of uncertainty, a new live-action Masters of the Universe movie is on its way to Netflix, with Kyle Allen set to take role, take on the role of He-Man. Netflix is partnering with Mattel to produce the new movie, with the Need Brothers serving as co-directors. The, the script is being produced by Nees and Cheng Chai and the Legend of the Ten Rings writer David Callahan. The new film's story will focus on He-Man, also known as Adam, as Orphan discovers he is a prince destined to be the savior of a faraway land. He must quickly learn learn of his power and the importance of saving his true home from an evil source. So we'll see how this fares. Jason Momoa is reportedly in talks to star in Fast and Furious 10. This is coming from comicbook.com. And talks to play the villain in the latest franchise. According to a Hollywood Reporter piece, the Aquaman star will be joining the Fast and Furious for the final stretch of the road if the negotiations pan out. Justin Lin is still attached as director after his beloved return to the series in Fast 9. According, also according to another trip around the track are Sing Kang, Tyrese Gibson, and Michael R- Michelle Rodriguez in a surprising turn. Charlize Theron is also expected to be back in the driver's seat for, the f- for these final installments as well. WWE and Disney have signed a major new multi-year deal. The pro, the pro Wrestling Promotion and Media Corporation have agreed the WWE Network will be available going forward on the Disney Plus Hot Star streaming service in Indonesia. Here in the United States, WWE Network is no longer available on, as the entire library and its live streaming events have been transitioned over to NBC Universal's Peacock streaming service. For everywhere else, the network has remained as a standalone OCT streaming network. We have a final channel for Uncharted. That was released three years ago, but we're going to do a live, a live react to it, uh, hopefully later on t- uh, by tonight, if not by tomorrow. Guys, if you're interested in checking that out, you can. Chris, I mean, Amazon's new holiday movie, Red One, has apparently added Captain America's actor, Chris Evans, to its cast. Deadline reports that Evans will appear in the starring role in the film alongside Dwayne The Rock Johnson. The film is expected to begin this year and described as a globe trotting fourth quadric action adventure comedy, but specific plot details are unknown at this time. 
Thank you, IGN, for that. And a sequel to Mortal Kombat has been greenlit and is moving with the Moon Knight Rider. Jeremy Slater. All right. And the, let's see. It's the next one's coming from the EW. Bad Girl's latest casting edition marks another step forward when it comes to Hollywood's opportunities for transgender actors. Ivory Akina, known for playing trans a activist Cecilia Chung in the 2017's AMC miniseries When We Rise and Dr. Perez in 2019's Tale of the Cities, joins Bad Girl as Bad Girl as El Sia, yeah, as bartender and best friend of Barbara Gordon. EW has learned. Aquino's this is come from Entertainment Weekly, by the way. Aquino's character will be the first trans role in a live-action DC movie, played by a trans actress. Nonetheless, we likely have HBO Max to thank for this. But yeah, that's a whole bunch, a whole bunch of positive news. And now we're gonna move on to sports, folks. All right, here's a report coming from the Bleacher Report. Los Angeles Lakers big man Anthony Davis has missed 16 straight games since December 2019 with an MCL sprain in his left knee. Will be a game time decision for his team's road game against the Miami Heat today. The Lakers also confirmed that Davis was officially been upgraded to questionable. Davis has averaged 23.3 points, 9.9 .9 rebounds, and 2.0 blocks in 27 games this year alone. So the Lakers announced Davis' injury in mid-December and said he would be reevaluated in four weeks. Longtime WNBA head coach Pokey Chapman is, is back in the league, this time as an assistant. Chapman has been hired along with the former WNBA player Ebony Hoffman by the, the Seattle Storm head coach Noel Quinn. It was announced Friday. Um, Chapman has been coach of the Chicago Sky for six seasons including a trip to the 2014 WNBA Finals and of the uh, Indiana Fever for three seasons. She also coached professionally overseas as well. Thank you, ESPN, for that. And then we have a little bit of uh, NBA uh, All-Star news, bit of news coming from the, the, uh, NBA.com. <laughs> so we have some key dates for you. Uh, January 27th is when the All-Star starters have been announced. February 3rd, All-Star Reserves will be announced. The 8th, the uh, Stay Farm Arena All-Star Saturday night participate, uh, participants will be announced. February 10th is All-Star Draft, and February 18th to the 20th, it's All-Star Weekend. And now we have the jerseys that have been released. All right, we're going to showcase this to you, to you guys in momentarily. Oh, wrong one. All right, there we are, folks. Here are the jerseys. Here's your all-star game uniforms. These are actually not bad. They're classics. Rising Stars uniforms. The Celebrity Games. Oh, these are actually nice. I like the white one more. <laughs> the black has too much going on. But, but honestly, I'm pretty sure that this... I, I, I wish we got like a, like a 360 view of it. But I'm pretty sure... This looks like this print, this purple print is going to be on the back, which, I, which I like. I'd rather be on the back than the whole front, like this is. But I like the back, the pack, the black more, though. That's it, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed this and looking forward to the game in Cleveland. For the set for the NBA 75th season. Great, dog. How you been? Glad to see you again. Hope everything's doing well. 
Let's talk on the news, the usual, for the podcast. And we're pretty much on sports, so we discuss gaming, tech, and entertainment. Now, after this, we're going to talk about music. Uh, great, great. I've been good. How have you been? So we have the playoff bracket for the 2022 NFL playoffs. Give me a second. So for today, actually, let's see. Give me a second. Let me see. Are they currently playing or no? Hold on. Give me a second. I'm pretty sure that this game's going on now. This is a video. I don't want that. Let's let this ad play out and it'll explain it a lot more than I can. <laughs> Let's see. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Let's see. Uh, apparently, it's not playing, so give me a second. Wait, I think because it's mute. No, it's not mute. Okay, let's go. Oh, I see why. Talk about quarterback matchups in NFL games, but let's face it. Come kickoff, Derek Carr can't do much about Joe Burrow, and Kyler Murray can't do much about Matthew Stafford, right? We'll have a lot more to come as we get into all of these matchups. 2021 NFL playoffs, look at that. I love that bracket. I'm guessing it didn't explain it at all. Wow. Let me see something to find. Uh... Okay. Let's go to videos. Let's get rid of this ad. It's not explaining nothing, really. But I'll just show guys you guys the image momentarily. Hold on. Let's see. Hmm. No, this is from the 30th. No, I'm guessing this is the best bet. <laughs> what I have here. But for all you football, uh, American football fans, you, you guys will understand this more than I, more than I. Because I, I don't know which teams are associated with what logos, barely, if anything. I'm assuming the 49 no, the Patriots against the Bills. The, so the Bills won. So essentially we have... The Kansas City against the Bengal, I'm assuming. And the LA Rams versus San Francisco 49ers. So they, I'm not a huge sports person. So the NFC Championship, the 49ers and the Rams will square off for the third time this season. The 49ers have won six straight games against the Rams, which includes a series sweep this season. And the, in the AFC title game, the, Bengal will, the Bengals will be... Tr Traveling to Kansas City to face off the Chiefs in a game that will kick off at 3 p.m. this Sunday. Or today. On CBS. Okay. 
So yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's an explanation, folks. <laughs> it took me a while to find it, but yeah. Nonetheless, let's keep going. We talked about this. Talked about this. This we're good. All right. Adam Scher, formerly known as Braun Strowman, as part of WWE, is headed to Dubai alongside his free the narrative cohort EC3. Scherer and EC3 will compete as a tag team in Dubai on March 7th. The event is being hosted by the United Wrestling Nation of the Arab United Arab Emirates. Emirates is being dubbed as the biggest wrestling event in the Middle East. The company, as well as Scherer and EC3's management, confirmed the news exclusively to the CBS Sports, where this article came from. Speaking of WWE, we have some Royal Rumble news for you. At the 2022 Royal Rumble, Brock Lesnar and uh, Ronda Rousey shocked the WWE Universe by winning their respective dub Royal Rumble matches. Bobby Lash, uh, Lashley conquered Lesnar to capture the WWE title in controversial fashion. Universal Champion Ro Roman Reigns snapped and lost to, to, to Steve Franken Rollins, freaking Rollins by disqualification. Royal Women's Champion Brock Lynch survived a dial drop and Edge and Beth Phoenix defeated The Miz and Maryverse. So I forgot to mention this little bit of NFL news as well. The outcry about the equity of the NFL's overtime format renewed after last week's epic AFC divisional game in Kansas City ended with the Bills touching the ball after regulation time expired and there was a strong expectation with the league uh, competition committee that multiple teams will make proposals on altering the process the tra uh, traditionally early time proposals are the norm in one fashion or another and with ample dialogue ongoing among fans and with, within the media about the merits of the current process the league officially fully expects several clubs to s submit suggestions for improving the process And speaking of NFL, we have a report that this might be Tom Brady's last game, but it's not official just yet. So after 10 rings, let's see if this will be his last game. So a fan has been ejected from the Sixers game against the Lakers. For some racial slurs that he made at Carmelo Anthony. And LeBron James is going to be out for today's game against the Hawks. With knee soreness. And here's a report coming from the Dirty South Soccer.com. That Georgia Bello is nearing the Atlanta United departure before it closes out. Before it's the transfer window closes. So this is going to be completed according to Fabrizio Romano. For a transfer of, of $3.75 million from the Belgian club Circle Brock. But yeah, we'll see if this, uh, this is actually official or not. Or this is just rumors, but we'll see. Or just speculation. Now we're going to move on to music, folks. We have a new Drake's official, first official Nike sneaker. This is coming from sneakernews.com. Here are the first images, folks. From the Nocta and Nike Hot Step Air Terra. Let us know what are your thoughts on this. If you guys are interested in copying this, let us know as well. All right, that's it. Universal Music Group, Twitch, and Amazon Music have announced an expansion of the company's agreement. According to the announcement, the agreement 
will provide customers with enhanced access to some of the world's most popular music content on Amazon, including live streams, high quality and spatial audio, artist merchandise, and exclusive experiences with UMG's industry music industry leading rosters of artists from around the world. Twitch and UMG will also work together to foster new initiative opportunities for artists and labels to cor- correctively and commercially engage with their fans and new audiences. So it looks like it's just an, uh, an opportunity for artists and fans to inter- uh, to, ra- to interact more. This doesn't look like it's going to be for streamers or content creators. It's not going to benefit uh, us, but we'll see. Hopefully this is just the first step. All right, moving on. Keep Cuddy. Hazley and J. Cole will headline the 2022 Governor's Ball Festival, which is scheduled to take place from June 10th to June 12th at City Field in New York City. We have some new music from a couple of Latin artists. Ricky, uh, we have Ultra Noche in LA from Ricky Martin. We have Ojos Rojos from Nicky Jam. We have a new album by Danny Lux. Perdido en ti. We have Cosole Cosil. Cosolielo and Tego Tego Calderon in Jambion. We have Los del Limit has released Mia Mi Despadida. We have Coco by Joel de Leon. We have Alex Ross in his latest single. Mela, Meladrama. And we have new albums by Sebastian Yatra, Dharma. And Danny Felix has released Antara Los Grandes. So that's all we have for you in Latin news. And then we have Two Dreams has, dropping, has dropped his checklist for his upcoming album, Dope Don't Sell Itself. So the full checklist is Bet It Back, Pop Music, featuring Moneybag, Beat King, Kingpin Ghost Rider featuring Lil Baby, Outstanding Roddy uh, featuring Roddy Roddy Rich, or should I say Roddy Rich? Okay, we have Neighbors Know My Name, Million Dollars Worth of Game featuring 42 Doug, Free BG, 10 Bracelets featuring Young Boy, and Never Broke Again, Young Young Boy Never Broke Again, Lost King featuring Lil Durk and Sleepy Rose, K-Man featuring Swale, Vlad TV featuring Stove God, Cooks, Simba, and Major Mia. If you want, if you want me to, featuring Jack Quest. And Nicki Minaj uh, will be is collabing with Lil Baby that will be dropping next week. Upcoming collab, uh, which the title has not been re- revealed just yet. Katy Perry adds 16 shows to her Los Ang- uh, Vegas residency. And speaking of Las Vegas, Adele's Las Vegas residency is on life support, but it's not that just yet. Caesars Palace and Live Live Nation want to, the show to go on, but they're trying to figure out how to work with Adele so they can come together and save the show. Billie Irish adds her Happier Than Ever tour and reschedules the show due to the Grammys. Well, will now perform at the brand new UBS Arena at Belmont Park in Long Island, New York on February 15th. The 2022 iHeart Radio Music Awards. And the competition is intense for the upcoming ceremony, which is set for March 22nd. And the likes of ARMY, BTS, Live, uh, Levis, uh, Livio Rodriguez, Limelight, Why Don't We, by Justin Bieber, Swifties by Taylor Swift, Ariantes by Ariana Grande, Stellan Torres by Selena Gomez, Harry's by Harry Styles, and more. Dave, Doja Cat, Ed Sheeran, Holly Humberstone, 
and Lil Sims are among the first wave of performers re revealed for this year's Brit Awards as one of Britain's biggest music events. The awards, which are scheduled to take place live at London's OT Arena on February 8th, will be broadcast on ITV, ITV Hub and streamed for nine UK viewers via the Brit's YouTube channel. Speaking of the Brit Awards, the Brit Awards was held off in its first ever NFT collection. The collection will celebrate the 2022 award winners following the live ceremony taking place on Tuesday, February 8th. Designed by digital artist MRE, who has worked with Brit winners Dave and Jay Ho, Hughes, the new collection will commemorate, commemorate winners in specific categories, including Artist of the Year, Album of the Year, Best New Artist, and much, much more. The initiative will offer fans to own a piece of music history and get closer to the winning artist by owning an official digital collection item associated with, with their career milestone. All right. Oh, excuse me. Well, <laughs> I'm going to say excuse me in time. All right, moving on. Essex S South by Southwest announces more than 300 more bands, including Wet Leg, Big Johnny, and Low Donia. It's going to take place March 14th to the 20th in Austin. This year's Essex SW will also feature performances by Cartel, Majerus, Cassandra Jenkins, Mickey Watzelis, Pillow Queens, Virgin Maria, uh, Bombing Tiger, and much, much more. And Spotify introduced a new initiative. Each year, billions of discoveries are made on Spotify. Anytime a listener streams an artist for the very first time, that can happen with an artist or on our are on or off cycle at any stage of their careers. We heard from artists from um, that they wanted to better understand the many paths to discover on Spotify so that they can continue to building their fan base. That's why we created Made to be Found, a new website guide for artists to explore how fans find and fall in love with music on Spotify. Made to be Found details how music goes from distributing, from distribution and playlist pitching. For three to three key pathways to reaching listeners, editorial, creation by Spotify, personalized uh, algorithmic recommendations, and fan-led streaming, like, like added songs to personal playlist. Plus, we recommend actions. Artists can take, a, take along that journey to grow and engage their audiences on Spotify. Each artist's journey to getting found on Spotify is unique. So alongside the site, we're or also rolling out a new beta feature in Spotify for artists that provide a detailed view of the sorts of streams. And we'll definitely uh, uh, put that in chat now. You guys interested in checking it out. And we're going to also put this in the show notes as well. Here's one, and here's two. And we have some new music from the Chainsmokers, Sebastian, yeah, oh, we did that, uh, LMA, Charlie X CX featuring Rina Rasawayama, XS Extension and Vice City, Anita and Boys Don't Cry, and that's it. If you guys are interested in checking out the hottest music and what we're listening to, be sure to check out our playlist over on spotify it's all it's uh, called the impact playlist all one word and i'm, I'm gonna uh put a link for that in chat as well as in the show notes as well once i get it copy link there you are folks here's our play our spotify playlist But nonetheless, it looks like that's all we have for you folks. But we're going to check Twitter, see if we have any news worry, uh, news worry, uh, not worry, worthy news or anything breaking. Okay, let's see. Thank you. 
Let's see. It looks like that's all we have. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. All right, looks like that's it, folks. So if you guys are interested in sending us free email, here's how you could contact us. We want to know your feedback, your thoughts, or even any questions you may have for us. Please send us free email on the Discord server, leaving a voice note over at echo.fm backslash the MPI play, or even by sending us an email to the read email at mpi.com. Who knows, it may be even featured on a future episode or even a special read email segment of the show. Thank you guys so, so, so much for making the MPI play a part of your day. If you should join our community server over on Discord, you should enter exclamation Discord in chat now. Guys, we're trying to like subs over on Twitch and we need your help. Literally, all we need are the views and and literally following us when we go live, hitting the notification button, just lurking. Just lurking go, goes so far and it will help us reach our goals in no time. So leave us a review, reduce the rating on your favorite platform. Also, Spotify did, did introduce a new feature that you can. Give a ranking for a, for a podcast as well. So uh, be sure to follow us on Spotify and hit that five star ranking to help us uh, uh, level up in the charts and help us reach even more viewers and listeners. Thank you guys so much. Have a great one. And until next time, for all all of our gold recruits and above or over on Anchor, we'll see you on the post. For everyone else, have a great one, folks. Uh, but it does look like that's about it. But I do I did want to highlight some more, something else as well. I got my hands up on. There is a, if you guys, for everyone in the Atlanta area, there is a culture collision trade show that's happening February 25th through the 27th. So it's a three day show on the, in the Cup Galleria Center in Atlanta, which is the biggest uh, sports card event in the South, over 72,000 square feet, over 500 vendors, a basketball court, a live DJ, exclusive trade nights, panelists, and much, much more. Guys, you're interested? Check it out at culturecollisionshow.com, or here's our QR to scan as well. Let me take off the blur. Hold on. Let's scan it in now, or you guys can you know, come back to the VOD and scan it in accordingly as well. <laughs>